Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and in today's little dev update we are going to talk about the progress on the engine designer in the UE4 version of automation. We have been hard at work implementing various features that belong to the engine designer and we are on the way to completing our internal little uh, milestone which we are aiming to uh, complete before before Christmas. and. Just to be very clear with this, there won't be a release of this milestone, but rather that is completely internal. And uh, we have set ourselves the goal to complete the engine designer in uh, all its glory, apart from a little bit of polishing probably, um, before Christmas so that we can move on to uh, fixing up the car designer as a next thing. Already in here you can see a few of the additions, like all these new icons and fields down here, which give you all the engine stats of the stuff you have selected. And this you will also see in the final testing tab, which has been revised. But let's um, load this engine, or rather, let's make a new one. The uh, only engine type that is fully working, although we have added, uh, well, fully working, uh, he says, when this comes up with some materials missing and so on. Um, but uh, anyway, there's still lots and lots of work going on on all these aspects I'm going to show you. So keep that in mind, nothing in here is really finished. But um, things are progressing rather quickly. Just to get a base engine to show to you, I'm going to build this uh, V6 and from there I'm going to show you some of the new stuff. All right, so the engine is uh, somewhat finished. It has not been tested yet, and that will be the first thing I show to you. Um, the revving, manual revving currently is a little bit broken, so I'm uh, not going to use that. It's somehow stuttering a lot. But in general, we fixed a few bugs related to performance, and things are running at a much higher frame rate compared to last video I showed to you, where frame rate was going down to like 15 frames or something. Now we are consistently above 60 once again. Uh, that's all good, but um, this here is part of the new um, layout. It's all over the place with uh, especially the flow bench and these icons here. But it shows to you the uh, basic new layout of the side panel and all the graphs. But uh, let's take a look at the uh, final testing page first. As you can see here, and maybe you've you watched our Facebook page and have already seen the drafts for it, this is now actually fully implemented in game and uh, we have on the final test bench um, basically combined the modes. So instead of switching mode and then getting to a different set of controls, you control everything from the same panel and you just have basically two start buttons. Or I could press the menu button here and then um, press stop once again, so the button changes. And you can manually rev here and have the, the major gauges which were of importance and you get all your stats displayed here. And um, yeah, that makes it overall just a little bit more straightforward. Let's take a look at the graphs. The graphs have been updated significantly. As you can see, they are looking all fancy, you know, uh, fancy now. They have the right coloring, much easier to read scale and um, yeah, and just, just much prettier. The only thing that is missing here, which might be quite a significant pain in the ass to fix is that Unreal currently doesn't support anti-aliasing for more than um, one pixel wide lines. This line should be at least two pixels wide and if we turn it to two pixels then it's all jaggy as hell. So that doesn't really work out for now. So we'll have to find some uh, way around that or maybe even implement it ourselves in some way. But uh, yeah, that's that's a bummer. Otherwise, the graphs are pretty much done. And as you can see here, the functionality is there. When you hover over, you get the detailed stats for what it's doing right there. And then when you um, escape with your mouse, then it just shows you the maxima as it would have um, in the old version of automation. The side panel has uh, gotten a complete revamp and currently it doesn't make much sense the way it's looking here with all these locked fields. And that is because of course we are not building a car where you could have up to four demographics pinned here, also in the engine designer. I think I mentioned that last time. So this will change in general. You will have a demographics comparison 
uh, feature everywhere you go in the engine design and car design. So uh, that will be very helpful. So you don't have to switch back and forth between trim and the platform or trim and the engine in order to see what your changes actually are doing. The side panel here has been revamped and basically looks now the same for engine and car. Uh, there are, I think if I remember correctly, I don't want to count our 14 stats on here. And this means all the engine stats fit on here and uh, all the most important car stats fit on on there in the uh, car designer and you get little tooltips for what it actually stands for these little icons all the icons have been or most of the icons have been remade and some many of them added so we are in general going for a much more iconographied uh, look of it and you will be happy to see here that there are various different modes the current mode is if you don't have selected any specific engine to compare your current engine to, then it automatically compares your current state towards the state of the engine before you made the last change. I just see that this, this value isn't really working as intended, but the rest is. So that's that's good. Well, not, not this one either. Ah, damn it. Okay, more work to do. But there are different modes. So let's take a look here. We can have a mode which just shows the difference. And if it's colored red, that means you lost that. So in this case, the performance index has decreased by 1.3, while the weight has decreased, because it's green, it's better, by 4.7 kilograms. And the uh, reliability has increased by 0.2. And then there is the percentage mode, which shows you how much percentage gain you've had over this previous version. And that is mainly helpful for when you are comparing it directly to another engine, which I don't have available here right now, um, although I could build another one and then show you that. But yes, if you if you have another engine in here, um, this brings up your engine selection mode, which is also <laughs> very, very uh, much only functional in nature and has, or not, not even properly that, um, but has none of the polish applied to it yet. So you get a big selection of engines and you can select your engine and then you can see how much better your engine is versus that other engine. That's uh, another feature which you guys have asked for plenty of times and it's finally making it into the game now that things are all being revamped. And then you also of course have these various modes comparing the raw numbers, um, just a raw difference between these raw numbers and the percentage difference between them. I don't think it was uh, finalized in the previous build yet, but uh, tooltips are now mostly working as intended. And, uh, well, these aren't, aren't really there, but yes, we, we made them um, a lot nicer looking now. So now they're more organized and actually functional in that sense. And of course, what we don't want to forget is the tooltips for what this part actually is. And for that we have made it much clearer that you actually can click these sections. And there's a little question mark there, so if you click it here, then up comes the uh, proper tooltip, which has a... Well, this one doesn't, but uh, let me see, is there any anything that's long? Yes. So you can scroll these and it indicates if there's more text to the bottom or, to, or the top. And uh, yeah, it's all in one place and hopefully not looking all too fugly. Just in general, some of you have been asking for, uh, where are the carburetors? Um, well, good news, I can show them to you this time around. Uh, last time, I don't think they were finished yet. So uh, let me take a look here. Let's select the, okay, this one doesn't exist. Um, standard, here we go. All right, so these are our carbs and they are all shiny and stuff. And this one will please you because some people were asking like ah but i want su carburetors well here they are they are were in the game already but you just didn't get the visuals of them so uh, we have a few su carburetor setups like this one for instance and uh, there are different settings of course for the intake now oh, let me be very clear about something here these intake options you see here are currently being modeled but they are modeled for the engine designer revamp. For the actual release, the next big update release, we will only have the standard options currently available in automation, which will be 
uh, the standard, the performance and the race option for the intake. So not this nicely varied um, set of, of graphics and stuff. But uh, that will come with the engine designer revamp, which I'm very much looking forward to. And they, uh, if you just search this channel, Automation Game Channel, uh, for engine designer revamp discussion, that whole thing, um, then you will find what the new calculations are all about and what kind of options you get and so on. So that's all cool stuff. So you have a low end, then we have a mid-range here for the, for the carbs and a performance setup as well as a race setup. Of course, SU carburetors weren't really known for their racy performance. So uh, if we instead switch over to something a little bit more reasonable, like two barrel carbs or DCOEs, of course, don't exist in a low range setup, but rather in a mid range, a performance and a race setup. And let's see with triple carbs. Yes, 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 yes. Let's look, that looks more like it. The four barrel carb. Um, exists in one and two and also different variants. Oh yeah, I think these weren't done last time either. The single point fuel injection and the mechanical fuel injection do have... Whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> I don't think this is quite finished yet. <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit, what's going on? Um, is this one? Oh yeah, okay, this was just not supposed to exist. But there is some um, some little airbox that snuck its way into there. So, um, yeah, not not quite finished as you can see. Uh, but, uh, uh, what the hell is going on? <laughs> yeah, okay, not finished. But single barrel, uh, not single barrel, single point fuel injection is done and looks quite fancy. Although it's kind of, kind of shit. Another neat feature I want to show to you is this here. You've probably already spotted the button and it is hiding something and let's see what it is hiding. It is hiding a selection. Oh, look, what does it do? Well, it makes things transparent or rather not, not quite transparent. It makes uh, things disappear. So we can uh, take off various aspects and it indicates to you roughly what it's going to take away before you do so. And, for example, taking off the engine cover, uh, the sump, and let's take away the block. And there we go. There you see the engine in action. Yay! All the explosions going on. This time without too many uh, missing materials, which is good. So that's all handy. And as you can see, we have fancy new icons for all of these. So, um, And not only the icons, but also little tooltip telling you what it, that actually is supposed to be and at some point you will be probably rather familiar with what what each icon represents okay but there there are more things to show to you because uh, yeah like i said this is now the phase where lots of things are happening and that gives me plenty of things to to show to you maybe not all that interesting but still worthy of showing is the new UI for the scenarios. Look! No longer do you have to click through a massive amount of trees, but rather all the scenarios are listed in one go. And while this screen isn't fully working yet, uh, or maybe I'm just really really good at the game and have completed everything in Platinum, and everything is kind of a uh, one kilometer distance type scenario, don't ask me what that means, and then um, yeah, you and every scenario is recommended also. Now, so what do we have here? Well, there will be a new kind of tutorial system in the game. Maybe not quite making its way into the first release of the UE4 version, although I would like to have it in there. Um, and that system recommends what kind of scenarios you play next, so that you build up your skills in a um, reasonable fashion without too many difficulty spikes. What I'm going to show to you here is how the side panel works for uh, the scenarios. All right, damn, I'm a little bit too good at this game. So I got a gold score on the first build through. And yes, you can see a little bit how the scenarios are supposed to work. Yes, it's fuggly as hell right now, but this is far from being done. It was just like thrown in yesterday, just the functionality of it and not polished whatsoever. 
you um, get a double use out of these little screens uh, or these little fields here which are usually reserved for demographics but in scenarios instead of demographics it's showing the requirements and if you hover over you see a list of your requirements and if you pass them or not and you see a list of your st scored stats but also there will be a side panel mode for showing you the scored stats uh, only only the relevant ones and then what threshold you need to get across so that will be much more streamlined as well and no more guessing and so on and this one actually changes color if you are uh, not fulfilling these requirements so let's take a look at how that works so that you can see that I'm not lying to you so if we go for super let it and not only do I not have a score but also the requirements are telling you so that you are not fulfilling them and the color changes accordingly like if you don't fulfill any requirement then it will be red just like the uh, demographics would be doing and here you can see your current score and yeah just what medals you you get and also one big big advantage of this design of the side panel this redesign of the side panel for the whole game is that we can always use this for the same side panel which saves us work and makes it much more um, consistent throughout and easier to tell what is what but not only that we also have these two extra fields here which now means the following in car scenarios we can finally have car scenarios which have normal scored stats like get more power than this and you gain score for it but also at the same time have demographics requirements like minimum requirements which also filter into your score that will make car uh, scenarios much more intricate and probably a little bit more difficult as well if we really want to but more realistic uh, on top of it and much more enjoyable and uh, to end this all this massive amount of new stuff i'm showing you let me show you some more uh, something which isn't relevant to the current milestone, but uh, something that Hamish has been working on for months now, and that is the factory environments. There are still graphical bugs in there, and uh, they are not polished up entirely. So also take this with a grain of salt, but we do have the free roam mode. And let me um, show to you what that entails. We can go to... Uh, this weird menu here yes uh, we want to load the huge distance scenery arid mountains so that's a huge factory and once it has loaded it takes a while yes we can fly our character and now we should be able to fly around in the factory and you see all kinds of artifacts and weird stuff popping in and out and that is not supposed to happen and that will be fixed obviously uh, this stuff is supposed to be shown from a large distance anyway. Alright, and with this out of the way, I hope you enjoyed, and I see you guys next time.